This video is based on the belief that quickness is a skill, not simply a birth trait. Participation numbers are by far the highest in team and ball sports and will account for most of your teaching, coaching and conditioning time. Sport by nature is dynamic and unpredictable and requires a combination of multi-directional movements to be performed at rapid speeds, often under pressure. The movement patterns of sport have many differences to that of track sprinting, which is where your thoughts immediately go to when you think of the word speed. As most sports are based around using bats, rackets and or balls of some description, the control of these objects has been the focus when it comes to skill development. What coaches and teachers are now beginning to recognise is the importance of controlling where your body is in relation to the object you are trying to hit, catch, pass or kick, and the opposition who might be trying to stop you or do the same thing. A player that can get to the ball first and is difficult to beat in defence will always have an advantage. You must attempt to get your body near the ball or in some space before you can apply any of the sport specific skills that will influence the game. Training and physical education time must target the acceleration, agility and reactions that will help get you in the right place faster. Speed and quickness requirements for sport are very different to that of track sprinting. Amongst the differences are in posture, balance, agility, arm action and reacting to a stimulus, be it a voice, ball or the opposition's movements. Critical movement differences are in the acceleration and agility requirements. Acceleration. Top speed takes between 40 and 70 meters to reach. Most sports require explosive distances of between 5 and 30 meters, which means the time available to reach top speed is significantly less. This indicates the importance of explosive acceleration training and first step quickness. Agility. A combination of these movements or multi-directional abilities are the real measure of agility, or the ability to rapidly change direction without a decrease in running speed. The area that we must target here is a one foot direction change. These patterns are generic for all sport, and the drills demonstrated in this video series are applicable to all levels of student or athlete. Practically, you do not have the time to teach and perfect technical aspects of straight line speed as this is only one piece of the physical education and sports training puzzle. A sprinter has only one primary action, to run. Sprinters generally tend to train as individuals and coaches have the benefit of closely monitoring, accurately progressing and correcting any technical faults. Most of your time is spent with groups and this type of assessment and individual tutorage will not be practical. There is not the time for continuous rehearsal of technique when you only have two to three hours of contact time each week and linear maximal speed is one piece of the equation. There is a huge gap between the latest developments in elite sprint tutoring and hands-on coaching in the classroom or on the sports field. We all know that not everyone you teach or train will become world beaters as we are all limited by our own genetic potential. However, every person you deal with has the potential to improve their agility and quickness and the techniques demonstrated in this video series will help maximise each individual's potential. You will see that there are many techniques available to you, both generic and specific, that will all help build your students' abilities to perform the movements required to participate and enjoy any sport. Running mechanics, warming up for speed and injury prevention. Coaches in sports such as golf, tennis and swimming recognise the gains in performance that can be achieved through specifically targeting technique. An increase in mechanical efficiency will lead to an increase in fluidity, speed and or accuracy of movement. Greater efficiency equals an increase in speed. This section looks at the mechanical components of linear speed and how the ankle, knee and the hip all contribute to movement and how these movements are controlled by the body's control network, the nervous system. The drills are designed to rewrite and ingrain effective movement patterns and to allow students to become sprint flexible through a range of dynamic activities. If a skill is to be mastered it must be broken down and developed progressively. Students need to gain an understanding of efficient movement and how that feels. Most coaches and teachers double up when it comes to a warm up. 
Typically this means that they will use grid drills, balls or bats in conjunction with activities to complete the warm-up. Speed attributes can be effectively enhanced with warm-up techniques that include dynamic skipping drills. This type of warm-up is beneficial towards conditioning the nervous system towards efficient movement, developing fast firing abilities of the muscles and increasing a fluid range of motion. To be fast, we must master speed skills. You cannot get fast by training slow. It is important again to note that some knowledge in the area of technique development and application is better than having no knowledge at all. You do not have to be an expert sprint coach to teach speed mechanics. An understanding of four to five key drills is more than enough in most teaching and coaching situations. This first section looks at linear or straight line speed mechanics. Drills are geared towards an increase in running speed through an improvement in either stride length and or stride frequency. Developing changes in motor patterns does not happen in two to three weeks. It takes practice and persistence. Repetition is required to ingrain the skills so that when students are physically and mentally fatigued, the body only remembers one way to move. The chain reaction of running mechanics are much more easily understood when the skipping series is used regularly. Excellent push off the ground is learned, posture is easy to correct, rhythm is gained, and arm action is accentuated. Key components in the following section are ankle position, recovery technique, leg drive or hip extension, and arm drive. Okay, so footwork. Let's have a look at where we need to land to maximize our speed and stay in control. You've got four possible positions you can land. As far as your feet are concerned, you've got your heel, you've got your toe, you've got the ball of the foot, and the flat foot. And we need to go through an exercise to have a look at which one of those positions is the most efficient for you to land in. So the first one is the heel. Let's have a look at how efficient that position is when we're looking at landing and moving around the sports field. Everybody rock back onto your heels. Jump up and down, as high as you can, quick as you can. Keep going. Okay, stop there. Right, now I want everybody to take five steps running forward and five steps running back just on your heels. And we'll do that twice. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, way go. And again, just on heels, running forwards, running back. Okay, every second person move forward now. So Benny, come forward, Flick, come forward, Jody, Kitty, yep. Okay, exactly the same thing now, but imagine you're on the basketball court and you're moving side to side marking somebody. You can only do it on your heels. Okay, so side to side like that, everybody. Let's go. Keep going. Okay. So that is foot position number one, and I'd like you to make a mental note, okay, as to whether or not that felt very efficient and how well it feels in comparison with the other positions we're going to use. Okay, move back into your line now. Okay, next position, let's look at the opposite. Let's go right up onto our very tippy toes and do exactly the same four exercises. So try and jump up and down just on your tippy toes now, okay? Keep them pointing down. Okay, let's try and run forward and back just on our tippy toes. Again, twice. Okay, every second person move forward. Okay, now side to side on your tippy toes. Okay, move quick. Okay, and move back into the line. So that's foot position number two. So make a note of how well that felt, okay, and whether it felt better or worse than number one. Okay, third one now, let's work off a, a totally flat foot. Okay, so make sure your whole foot stays on the ground and let's jump up and down like that, okay? Okay, let's run forwards and backwards on a flat foot. Okay, every second person move forward. And now side to side on your flat foot. Good. Okay, back into the line. Okay, last one now, that was position number three. So make a note of how efficient that felt for you. Last one's going to be the ball of the foot. Now to get on the ball of the foot, you just rock forward. So your heels just come off the ground. This time, when you jump into the air, make sure instead of that toe pointing down, it points up. Okay, and when that foot hits the ground, make sure it lands on the ball of the foot. Where's the ball of the foot? Yeah, the spongy ball's between your toes and your forefoot. Okay, so land there. Keep your heels up off the ground, okay, and jump up and down like that. There you go. 
and forward and back five times. Okay, move forward every second person, go. And move side to side like that, down low. Okay, and move back. Which one of those foot positions felt most efficient? Ball the foot. Okay, so that little exercise goes to show you, okay, quite easily and quite quickly how important it is to teach your foot to land on the ball. Okay, we know that when you're landing on the heel, that's inefficient. You couldn't jump off that. So what your body has to do when you're playing your game, when you're running, is it has to rock from your heel onto your toe. Okay, which takes time and slows you down. Okay, if you're running off your tippy toes, or you land on your tippy toe, then again, you can't push off the ground there, can you? Because your foot's already straightened out. So you have to rock down and load that foot up again before you can take off the ground, and that takes time too, okay? Which means it slows you down. You can't jump off a flat foot, okay? And a flat foot is a big break for you. Whenever you make contact with your whole foot, it makes a heavy noise and it slows you down, okay? You can't drive off it. But if we can teach your foot to load, like we did with the ball of the foot, by pulling your toe up, then you put your foot into a position when it can fire straight away. Okay, so think of a gun loaded, firing, your foot can fire into the ground in the same way. Okay, and get off there quickly so you don't slow down when you're playing your sport. Okay, ball of the foot, ball of the foot. So, firstly, let's just get our right foot into the air. Okay, and practice just tapping that foot on the ground, ball of the foot, up and down, pulling your toe up. Okay, left foot, toe tap. Go faster. Good, okay, so first drill that we'll look at doing to try and teach your body to work off the ball of the foot and have that toe in the air when that foot hits the ground is the cool walk. Take a small step, land on the ball of the foot and push up onto our toes. Okay, so we're not pushing off the ground yet, just walking, toe up, ball of the foot and just teaching your body how to pull those toes up Stretch those calves. Where you go. Let's start with the feet and the cool walk. We're starting from the feet and working our way up. Right Speed there. improvement starts with the feet as this is where ground up. contact occurs. Really pull them up. Improvements in both the positioning and the strength of the ankle is the okay, first step to improving quickness. The stronger and more stable the ankle, the less drop in the center of gravity, the greater the stretch reflex. The stretch reflex assists greatly with the drive contraction. Okay, toe up. Key teaching points for this activity are keep your toes up. The toe up principle helps prevent overstriding. The toe up principle also assists with knee flexion as the gastrocnemius assists with this movement when, it's in, when the toe is in the up position. The toe also acts as a loaded gun when it is in the up position. It is ready to fire and instantaneously affect force into the ground which initiates movement. Land on the ball of the foot. Landing on the ball of the foot and keeping the heels off the ground initiates the stretch reflex. If the heels touch the ground, this takes away from the stretch reflex and you lose a lot of power. Okay, let's advance that a step now and start pushing off the ground. So instead of walking with it, we're gonna push off the ground, okay, make our cars work a little bit harder and start getting a drive off the ground and we'll drive and move into a skip, okay? So ankling, pushing off the ground, little steps, just teaching that foot to load, land, and push off again. Away you go. Small steps, toes up. Ankling is a progression on the cool walk. Here we're progressing the drill to a push off the ground, which increases the drive, increases the load on the calves upon landing, which develops greater strength and initiates the stretch reflex to a much greater degree. Strong ankles and calves are critical to maintaining a stable foot. Key teaching points are short, fast skips. We must minimize the ground contact. Again, the longer the foot stays on the ground, the greater the braking forces. Having light feet. Light feet or quick feet. All right, so let's imagine we're running now and we've taken the first step that we've talked about. That foot's come off the ground, our toes come up. What does that foot have to do now? Where does it have to go? It has to come up, doesn't it? To take another step. 
There's still a little exercise here that shows you how important it is for you to get that foot up and get a nice bent leg before you bring that leg through. Okay, hands behind your back. Let's use our right leg and keep it very straight and just push it forward and back as quick as you can from the hip. Okay. Okay, quick, quick, quick. Okay, let's change it now. Let's shorten that foot. Now I want you to bring your right foot towards your butt. Okay, keep your knee bent and do the same. Forward and back. Quickly. Okay, which is quicker? Bent knee. Okay, so that shows you if you want to improve the speed at which your leg comes through and therefore improve your running speed, that foot needs to be high so that leg is nice and short. So you shorten the lever. Okay, which muscles bring that leg up? Bring that foot up? Hamstrings. So we've got to try and teach hamstrings to be strong and bring that foot up. And what happens to quadriceps here? We've got to stretch. Okay, so you're strengthening and stretching, strengthening and stretching. So the drill we look at using to isolate that and to teach that is the butt kick. What I want you to do is to imagine you have a steel bar between your knees, okay, which means your knees can't move up and can't move back. Okay? They stay still, pointing straight down. You take small steps and just practice kicking your butt. Okay? Kicking, strength, and stretching here. Okay, try that. This drill steps. develops both the strength needed in the hamstrings to repeatedly bring the foot up in the recovery cycle and the dynamic flexibility in the quadriceps which lessens the resistance and leads to a smoother action. That's good. Keep your knees nice and still and go back. If quadriceps are tight, nice and light. they can restrict knee flexion by opposing the contraction of hamstrings and cause additional hamstring fatigue. As hamstrings fatigue, the ability to explosively extend the hip weakens, which leads to a diminished drive and a shorter stride length. Key points include knees locked together, Keep the knees pointing down, heel to butt, and a fast action. Our toes come off the ground, our foot started to come up. Now we know we've just done a drill to help bring that foot up high. What do we do next with the knee? Bring it over high, don't we? Now why do we bring it high? Hey? Yeah, to help increase your stride length, okay, to get a nice strong drive with that knee, but also to help get a stronger drive off the ground by bringing that foot up nice and high as well. So what we're going to do now to try and teach your body to bring that knee up high and that foot up high is to have that steel bar still there, but this time you've got to step over it, okay? So your foot's going to go up and over that steel bar, okay, up and over. So it's toe passing over your knee. And as your knee comes up, make sure that that foot comes up at the same time. Toe of a knee on the spot is a progression on the butt kick. It completes the recovery cycle of the leg and places it in the correct position to apply extension forces or to drive. This cycle is first completed at slow speeds with one leg before progressing to two legs with movement. The foot should pass directly over the knee in a smooth circular motion. Key points for this drill are reach with the knee, Toe over knee, smooth circular motion. Reach with the knee. The march drill progresses the toe over knee drill into a walk. The recovery knees. mechanics remain unchanged, with the progression being in the extension of the drive leg whilst completing the recovery cycle of the opposite leg. The toe over knee, okay, step over it. Make this is an excellent lead into the full skip as the ability to extend the leg fully or to triple extend will determine the strength and speed of the drive and corresponding propulsion which will dictate the length of the stride. The drill uses the same recovery mechanics as the toe over knee on the spot but with motion. Key teaching points for this activity are lift from the hip, take short steps reaching with the knee, keep the toe up and foot loaded, extend fully by getting up high on the back leg, Bend forward slightly at the waist. This leads to greater stability and control. You're running and moving, your body's trying to drive off the ground as hard as you can to lengthen your stride. Okay, so we're going to make a change now, and instead of walking with that, we're going to start pushing off the ground. Okay, still going toe over knee, but now we're stepping up and over and driving up high. So we're trying to teach this back leg to straighten out. Okay? Get it nice and straight, 
extend of the hip, knee and ankle. So you're maximizing your push off the ground and maximizing your step, okay, your stride length. Let's do this the now. skip completes the linear forward, speed progression. Short steps, Progressing okay, to a push off the ground over, develops a more powerful drive and increases the load on the ankles, the knees and like hips that. upon landing. The loading, recovering, driving and landing actions are completed with right, rhythm guys. and control. Skipping is a combination of efficient ankle, knee and hip Here's mechanics arms, and when mastered should Think be performed at maximal speed with minimal ground contact. Key points for this activity are triple extension and a strong drive, fast recovery, minimal ground contact. Okay, let's look at arm action now. All right, we notice that when you're doing a lot of those drills and emphasizing or concentrating on your legs, your arms don't do a heck of a lot. Okay, and you don't get a lot of rhythm without using your arms properly. So let's look at two or three drills that we can look at doing as a class right, that'll improve your arm action and therefore improve your movement. Why are these important? Any ideas? Yeah, speed. Okay, number one, your arms can't move any quicker than your legs, and your legs can't move any quicker than your arms, so they must work together with speed. Anything else? Balance. Okay, that's really important. If you removed your legs and your arms, then there wouldn't be a heck of a lot left of your body, okay, just a torso, and, and they're big, heavy appendages, and they have to work together, okay? They have to work together to balance your body, so they must work as a unit, okay? Yeah. So arms coming across your body firstly, Okay, across your body like that will cause a balancing act with your hips. And see, they have to rotate to balance my body. So if I come across with my right or my left elbow, then my right hip rocks forward to balance me up. And if my hips are rocking when I'm running in a straight line, then that's going to be negative for me. So the first thing we need to know about our arms is to keep them straight. Okay, not dead straight like a robot, but straight line. Okay, no further than the middle of your body. So right across in line with your belly button. Okay, stand on the spot and do that. Nice and straight. Okay, good. Now the second thing we need to look at our arms for, okay, is the joint angle. Okay, the angle you've got your elbow set at and how long your arm is. Now if your arms are flying around and they're straight and they're untidy, then they cause the same sort of rotation in your body. Okay, if my arm comes right back, then it causes the same hip to rotate to balance me up. So rotation means slow movement. So to make sure we don't have our arm pushing back behind our body, we keep it bent, okay, at 90 degrees. So we're working 90 degrees from our hip to our chin. So work like that, hip to chin, okay? Keep them bent, don't let them straighten, from the shoulder. Good. And the last thing we'll look at is relaxing the hands. Okay, if your hands are tense, then your forearms become tense, your upper arms become tense, chest becomes tense, and tension is not positive for our sport. Okay, and you'll see all the time when you're watching television, top sprinters will have very, very relaxed jaws and their lips will actually be wobbling around. Okay? You can't relax if your hands are tense. So to teach your body how to relax your hands, I want you to imagine that you're holding a small pebble between your thumb and your first finger. So let's do that. Okay? Hold on to a pebble. Okay, let's have our hands and fingers facing forward and go hip to chin like that. Okay? Good. Okay, next thing we'll look at with arms is a drive. Okay, that can be really helpful for you, for you to bring that knee up high and for you to push harder off the ground. And a good exercise we can do to emphasize that is to put your hands behind your back. Okay, now use your right leg and lift it up and down as fast as you can. Okay, now I want to make a comparison between speed of lifting your leg without using your arms and using your arms. So bring your arms out. Now this time when you bring your right knee up, Drive your right elbow back and your left elbow forward. Okay, so you're snapping it up. Let's do that. Snap it up. Key teaching points for this activity are keep the arms locked at close to 90 degrees, straight line drive, shoulders stable, not rotating, thumbs pointed forward, hands close to pockets, drive back to the hip and forward to the chin, and relax the hands by pretending to hold something between the thumb and the first finger. Sit on the ground. Alright, next thing we'll look at is drive. Okay, and if you work your arms properly, they can really help you with a strong drive off the ground, which is going to improve your stride length and make you move quicker. Alright, now the important part of your drive with your arms is to get the elbow snapping back. Okay, must come back because that's where you get your drive from. 
When your arm comes forward, it's just an elastic response for you. Okay, it's just loading up again and driving. Loading, driving, loading, driving. So we've got to work on driving our elbows back and getting a strong drive. Now this drill is going to show you if you're using your arms well or using your arms poorly. Okay, get your arms ready, 90 degrees. Sit up nice and tall. Okay, and run. Elbows, snap them back. Okay, work them hard. Butt bounce. Keep going. The butt bounce drill clearly demonstrates how kinetic energy Good. can be and developed with efficient arm side. action and how it can help with the leg drive. Bouncing off the ground. This movement okay, also assists that. with the warm up as it raises the internal temperature yeah, and warms up the upper body. This sort of energy is kinetic energy. Okay, and when you drive your elbow back, okay, that energy starts here and it flows through your trunk. Okay, because you're sitting on the ground, the energy stops at your hip, hits the ground, and comes back. And up when you're again. running, instead of your bum being on the ground, your leg is. So instead of that energy flow stopping here, it keeps on going through your knee, ankle, toes, hits the ground again, and pushes you where? Up and forward. Okay, and because you're in your running posture, it's giving you a stronger drive off the ground, which means you're taking a longer stride and you're moving quicker. Okay, so it's really important to get that snap going back. And this drill is going to teach you how to do that properly. So feet out in front again, sit up nice and tall, and get those butts bouncing off the ground. Elbows back. There you go. Students must attempt going. to get their butts bouncing off the ground, as this indicates an efficient snap back of the elbow. Okay, good. And a good warm-up drill for you because you're warming up your upper body. Okay, next one we'll do is called elbow punches. It's the same sort of thing, teaching you to drive your elbows back, but this time we're going to make you drive back and hit something. So you get a really strong movement going there. Okay, so Jody's going to show us the elbow punches. I'm going to put my hands behind her, and she has to drive her elbows back and hit my hands. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to hold my hands into a position where I make her go hip to chin. Okay, and drive her elbows back. Good. Let's pair up. Elbow punch. Elbow punch is a progression of the butt bounce into a functional standing position. Students work in pairs and place their hands into a position where they act as a target for their partner's elbow drive. This reinforces the snap back of the elbow. Alright, so we've just done three or four drills that are going to help you with your straight line running, okay, your straight line mechanics, and if we look at how important those are for a warm up, Again, if we want to move quickly for our ball sports and run fast when we need to, we need to be teaching our body how to move quickly. And if we compare the speed gait to your jogging gait, okay, the speed gait that we were just using was toe up, high recovery, high knee drive, and pushing hard against the ground and driving off. Okay, and if we compare that to a jogging gait, when you push off the ground you don't drive hard, when you bring your leg through you bring it through low to conserve energy, and you don't push hard off the ground when you drive because you're conserving energy. And what do you land on when you're jogging? Land on your heel. So you go heel to toe and roll over. And we know to be quick, we need to be ball of the foot, we need to be high recovery and a strong drive. Okay, so that, those sorts of warm up drills will just reinforce and teach you to be quick to make sure you don't get injured, okay, and you move more efficiently. Let's just try a skip using our arms now, okay, to see how much more efficient we are. So I want you to go toe over knee, all right, reach over, reach with the knee, up nice and tall, and use your arms, okay, as a unit. So stepping over, elbows snapping back, pushing up high on that back leg, keeping it straight. There you go. Heads up, look where you're going. When good arm action is applied to the skip, the benefits become clear. Good. Come back. As there is an immediate improvement in balance, bend, rhythm, knee, posture, nice and drive. Straighten that back leg out. When only straight line running is emphasised, the muscles used to sidestep, move laterally, sidestep, and react in a game situation are not effectively conditioned. Multidirectional speed is dependent on the education of all muscle groups that control the range of motion of the hip. We must target the dynamic flexibility, fast firing abilities, and strengthen these muscle groups, as this often ignored aspect is a critical component to quickness development. The same principles that are used to break down and teach the straight line mechanics can be applied to the multidirectional requirements of team and ball sports. Specific movement patterns can be taught that will allow students to have far greater body control in any given situation and enable first step quickness. 
First step quickness requires excellent control of posture, balance and good limb alignment. Explosive multi-directional movements will have a much greater influence on the success or failure in team and bull sports as agility and reactive speed is where space is created or lost. Developing a greater range of motion will also assist greatly with the prevention of injury. Alright, so there's our straight line running tidied up. Now we'll move on to a multi-directional movement. And we, we said at the start that because most of you play ball sports, you need to move side to side, forwards and backwards, change direction, and the movement there is a lot different than running in a straight line. Okay, so the first drill we'll look at is called the karaoke there. And that's going to teach you how to use your hips properly. Okay, how to get hip control. Remember, with your hips, okay, you've got a ball and socket joint there. That joint can do a heck of a lot. can get that foot facing in all sorts of funny directions. Okay, remember, when you're moving around the sports field, whichever way your foot faces, Karaoke. that's the way that you run. Karaoke drill is excellent for developing fast and flexible and hips. Your movement. The movement is characterized by a high knee rotation across the body, followed by a high knee step behind with aggressive hip rotation. You're going to step across your body by turning your hips, okay, straighten up and then step behind your body by turning your hips. Okay, so you go across, behind, across, behind, Cross, right? When you run with it, you'll look like this. Okay, short steps and watch how my hips move and my feet move. Okay, front, back, front, back, front, back. My shoulders stay nice and square and my hips move. So let's start with your left shoulder facing me and try that. There you go. High knees. Okay, left shoulder facing me again. And go back. Emphasis must be placed on reaching with the knee as this initiates the hip rotation. The shoulders are kept as square as possible as this isolates the hips and encourages a greater range of motion. Just turn your hips. So let's just change the skip we did in a straight line and move it into a lateral line, okay, and pushing side on. So now you'll do this. Okay, skip, land, Push, okay, so see here I'm pushing with my right leg, okay, landing on my left leg, and my right leg is doing the driving, okay, so we're driving and landing, teaching my right leg to push harder off the ground and get more efficient. So let's try with your right leg first, so left shoulder's facing me, now skip on the spot first to get some rhythm, okay, and skip out, push, remember don't cross those feet over, lateral skip. The lateral skip develops specific strength in the lateral drive muscles which are responsible for controlling side to side movement. The speed of any side to side or lateral motion is reliant on the efficiency of these muscle groups and how effectively they can be recruited. Care must be taken to stay square and keep the feet from crossing over as this puts the student into an unbalanced position. Look for triple extension through the ankle, knee and hip as you would for straight line speed as it is the drive that controls the speed, not the reaching of the foot. Skip and cut is when you're facing one way or moving sideways and need to cut and move left or cut and move right really quickly. So we're not talking side to side movement now, we're talking stepping across your body and running in a straight line to chase someone or to chase a ball. So for your body to be able to step across your body Okay, your foot to be able to step across your body to take a step and run, you need to have lots of hip flexibility. Okay, that foot needs to be able to come across your body, all right, quickly and easily before you can use it. Okay, so to be able to come across your body quickly and easily, we need to get flexible and we need to get quicker performing that action. So on the spot for a start, get down into a, into a power position, put your left hand up, okay, try and hit your left hand with your right knee, take it across your body, okay. Keep your hips nice and still. Take it across. Okay, now we'll look at moving on to a skip with that. So remember a crossover skip. We skip on the spot, but instead of pushing side on, we pivot and land. Okay, pivot, land, pivot, land, pivot, and land. So the the skip and cut drill develops the ability to skipping, explosively step across your body and sprint and right or left. Okay, with the skip. Being able to pivot into a sprint is an excellent weapon to master as it is a common movement on the sports field. 
Okay, now, skip and cut. Way go. This drill is characterised by a high knee rotation across your body and a squaring up and a skipping motion. A key teaching point here yep. is the shortening of okay. the rotating leg. The foot must come up high and the toe the should pass over the knee as it Make does it with the efficient straight line recovery cycle. The shorter lever pivots faster and will be in a much higher position to apply powerful drive forces, which will allow for better momentum with the first step drive. This is not an everyday movement and repetition is required to firstly develop the range of motion and secondly the fast firing abilities. Okay, drop step. This time we're going to move backwards. We're going to pull our leg up out and back and get our foot back as far as we can, land on it, and then do the same with the other foot. Okay, so we're moving backwards and rotating out with the knee. So you go here. The drop step movement develops a functional range of motion okay, in abduction and external rotation. Nice and light. This dropping back movement is a common on. pattern in sports, okay, so where one-on-one -on -one marking up and defence is a critical component of the game. The movement is characterised by skipping backwards, reaching up, Good. out Rotate and out. around with the knee. A forward lean, remaining in the power position, always allows for greater balance and the ability to quickly change direction if needed. This is an excellent drill for preventing soft tissue injury in the groin region. Rapid footwork and correct foot placement is a critical factor in all sports at all levels. Without foot control, there is no body control. Footwork is often the most difficult aspect for students to master, as the feet are a long way from the brain, and the signals directing the feet where to go often get lost or mixed up on the way down. Developing faster feet is a skill that must be targeted specifically, as it is the feet that control your ability to move quickly. All the strength in the world is wasted if the feet are out of control. Bladder forces students' legs and feet to adapt to extremely fast patterns of footwork by repeating them over and over. Repetition is required to ingrain movement patterns and progressively master foot control at higher and higher speeds. The layout of the ladder teaches a continuous loading, firing and reloading of the foot. It also enhances limb alignment, which is crucial to the joint's ability to apply extension forces and to prevent possible overuse injury. Start off slowly with all drills and progress to maximal speed once a slower speed is mastered. Key teaching points are light feet or quick feet. Work on the ball of the foot. Watch for scuffing here as scuffing indicates a toe down position and an inefficient ground contact. Straight run. The run is a simple lead in exercise where one foot is placed in each square. When working with a group leave approximately six rungs between each person. This will ensure that each person can work at their own speed and avoid any problems with slower students getting in the way of students with faster feet. If this happens, both students are affected as one cannot move at top speed and the other is under pressure to get out of the way and often makes errors. Only go as fast as the skill level allows. Good technique and rhythm should be mastered before the running speed is increased. Two foot run. The two foot run is a simple progression where we place two feet in each square instead of one. This is more challenging and there are double the number of foot contacts per repetition up the ladder. Make sure the leading foot is changed with each repetition. If a student leads with the left leg on the first repetition, they should lead with the right leg on the following repetition. It is important here to emphasize that the feet stay in control and stay ahead of the body. Students may tend to lean too far forward with this drill. As the centre of gravity goes past the feet, rhythm and balance is lost. Okay. Lateral run. Lateral run targets the side-to-side -side movement abilities. Two feet are placed in each square in a running motion. The side-on posture is maintained with the shoulders staying square. Watch that the feet don't cross over as the students are running through the ladder and that they change sides with each length of the ladder which develops both left and right side quickness. Two and two outside on run is characterised by a two step run in and a two step run out, moving in and out of the ladder. 
This drill specifically targets a one foot direction change in the forward and backward plane. This drill has a direct carryover to most sports, as explosively reacting forwards and backwards is a core movement. The drill increases the intensity of the ladder workout as it requires four foot placements per square, literally doubling the intensity of the previous series of drills. Try to get a 1-2-1-2 rhythm as you work in and out of the ladder. The 2 and 2 out front on run is again a 1-2-1-2 two, two rhythm. This time it is for a forward and lateral motion, running directly through the ladder. Don't worry about getting too much speed. This drill develops general foot control and correct limb alignment for a possible lateral drive. The side reach run targets specific alignment between hip, knee and ankle for a possible lateral direction change. Instability in the foot or knee can cause rotation and lead to possible injury. Good limb alignment is critical to the strength of the lever. The lever strength will determine the corresponding drive. The drill is characterised by a one in three out pattern, moving along the outside of the ladder. Instruction for this activity is a one, two, three, four rhythm, with the fourth step being placed into the ladder with a lateral drive, rather than reaching forward with the step. The side step run is a more complex drill and more difficult to master, as the feet do not follow each other. This foot pattern is specific to a diagonal cut or side stepping at high speeds. It is a two in, one out pattern that must be mastered at slow speeds before progressing into quicker movement. A one two out, one two out mental count is helpful for gaining early rhythm. Once mastered, it is an excellent all round drill. The in out outside arm with hip rotation is an excellent drill for developing hip flexibility. It is characterised by an in out out rhythm. Hip rotation is used to place the foot into the square and a forward lean is maintained which allows for greater balance. Mini hurdles are a great tool for further developing and reinforcing recovery mechanics. They can be included as part of a warm up, circuit station or as a specific activity. The 30 cm high hurdles give students a physical obstacle to work over which encourages the toe up, heel up, knee up principle. If the student does not recover the leg efficiently, there is a strong chance that the hurdle will be kicked or knocked over. If two or three hurdles are knocked over in succession, the student can immediately understand that the mechanics are poor and make a physical adjustment. Conversely, if students can run through without displacing any hurdles, they can physically understand that sensation and understand a good recovery cycle. The following is a series of progressions that you can apply to a teaching situation, with the end result being an improvement in recovery technique and the capacity to maintain this technique at high speeds. As with most skills, a slow speed with good technique is mastered before moving on to more difficult activities. Eventually students should not have to think or concentrate on what they are doing, as the skills will become ingrained and learnt on a subconscious level. The distance between the hurdles depends to a degree on the age and the size of the participants. Use approximately two steps between each hurdle as a guide, and make adjustments if needed. If you do not have hurdles available, try substituting them with obstacles of similar height, although care must be given to the stability of the barrier. If it is too stable it may be dangerous, and must fall easily when kicked or knocked by students. The 
One foot walk is similar to the toe over knee on the spot drill. It targets a single leg recovery action, but has done so with a walk, stepping up and over each hurdle. Watch for the foot being brought around to the side of the hurdle instead of directly over. Make sure the supporting leg takes a very short step and is placed directly beside each hurdle upon landing. Landing in front or behind will encourage poor technique. Good arm action is emphasised with all mini hurdle activities. The dead leg run progresses this activity with speed. This increases the difficulty and encourages a faster recovery cycle. When watching from the front, you should see a straight line between hip, knee and ankle. The two foot walk progresses on the single leg activities and forces the students to step over each hurdle with alternating legs. Working through the hurdles encourages a stronger triple extension. A common fault seen with this and the following series of drills is students dropping into a backward lean. This encourages a studded, jumping, reaching with the foot motion, which leads to very poor mechanics. Emphasis must be placed on a strong midsection and stable hips with a forward lean. The two foot run progresses this drill into a more specific sprinting motion. It represents the ability to master a number of mechanical skills that all contribute to the straight line speed potential. These include straight line drive, good posture, arm action, recovery, strong extension and light ground contact. The double foot series decreases the running speed through the hurdles but encourages faster footwork. Two steps are taken in between each hurdle instead of one. This doubles the number of steps performed for each run and doubles the intensity. Practice this with a walk before progressing into a run. When progressing into a run, students tend to fall back into a jumping motion instead of recovering normally over the hurdles. The foot sound should be even and in control and make sure you change the leading leg with each run throughout the hurdles. The run through with a sprint out adds a competitive aspect to your hurdle workout. Choose from the selection of drills to run through the hurdles and upon reaching the end, explosively accelerate to the marker at a set distance. The sprint at the end places greater pressure on the hurdle technique and highlights any flaws. The mind tends to think ahead to the sprint and is not focused on efficient technique. Lateral movement and agility can be greatly enhanced through hurdle drills. The hurdles help develop a stronger lateral drive as the height of the obstacle represents a challenge to drive over. Start with a walk and progress into a run. This is also an excellent conditioning drill and enhances balance and footwork. Arms must be emphasised to maintain rhythm and assist with the drive and make sure the students stay square and lift with the hip to get the knee up. The lateral run with a change is an excellent agility exercise. Students will play as pair up and begin a lateral race through the hurdles. Upon the command change, they prop and go back in the opposite direction. This change of direction should take place with only one step. This is characterised by an immediate change of direction without stopping or a heavy braking sound. Students with poor strength and footwork will tend to buckle on the braking leg and come to a complete stop. This drill can be made to be very physically demanding as the duration of this activity can be manipulated by the teacher or the coach. You can go for 5 seconds, 10 seconds or up to 30 seconds.